Welcome to Rewriting the Classics with Justin Gellarmino, the show where we take something you know and love, keep the flavor profile, but maybe nudge it in a weird direction you never thought of. Today, we're playing the hits. Starting out with a classic chicken noodle soup, and in my ongoing efforts to prove that all things can be made into meatballs, we're making chicken noodle soup meatball sandwiches. After that, I'm going to the Campfire Classic S'mores for a deceptively simple yet impressive dessert of s'more empanadas. And finally, I'd be remiss not to include a cocktail, so we're tackling the classic gin and tonic with a spicy new twist. Let's get after it. Let's get started with chicken noodle soup. Nearly every culture in the world has their own variation of it, regionally, subbing in rice, dumplings, you name it. It all varies from place to place. For the purposes of today's meal, we're going with the classic that exists, if nowhere else in my mind, in my kitchen. So we're starting out with broth. Some people would say you go with water. I would say these people are fools and you take any opportunity you can to add flavor. This is a low sodium chicken stock. It's because, well, we don't need that much sodium in our lives. Next, let's get into the veggies. Most traditional chicken soups will start off with a mirepoix, which is just a fancy French term for onions, celery, and carrots. Traditionally, it would be two parts onion to one part celery and carrots. So let's get a little chop and action going. Slide into the onion. Notice I'm using a rather small paring knife solely because I'm not a professional chef and this makes me more comfortable for cutting an onion. Let's peel off that outer layer. Nobody wants that. And for the purposes of this, we're not technically making chicken noodle soup at the, right now, but we're getting started in the same fashion that we might. So it doesn't need to be a terribly refined chop because none of this is gonna end up looking like onion by the time we're done. Let's just give it a quick little rough chop. Try not to cut your fingers off because that's unpleasant for all parties concerned. And let's go ahead and toss that right into the stock. Prefer red onion to the more traditional white or yellow or Spanish. If for no other reason, color, and I like the, the bite of the flavor. Let's grab a little celery here as well. Again, rough chop's fine. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. This is not going to be celery by the time we're done. A little bit more here. Probably avoid the leafy parts. They don't do so well for what we're doing here in the end. Let's go ahead and toss that in as well. All right, next we're gonna grab the carrots. I prefer to use fancy heirloom carrots, specifically the purple, if for no other reason than they have a pretty color. It's a sidebar. The traditional orange carrot that we know and love today is actually cultivated by Dutch farmers in the 17th century as a tribute to William of Orange, one of the heroes of their independence. Today, most recently, red, yellow, white carrots have returned to prominence in fancy or high-end supermarkets, and you're seeing them more and more often all the time. Just give these another rough chop as well. Toss in a couple more here. You should notice I'm using baby carrots solely because, well, they're convenient and make a lovely snack. So always nice to be able to have a healthy snack, convenient, easy, you, the kids, anyone. Toss those in and let's get them boiling. So for this, we're just going to cook down the vegetables for now. Just get the flavor in there. Nice medium heat or so. You don't quite want to bring it to a boil. So again, we're not actually making soup right now. We're making the idea of soup right now. So I'm toss some of these things by the wayside here, clean up a little bit. Most people would probably stop with just the onion, celery, and carrot. I prefer to throw in a little pepper, specifically like a sweet pepper, bell pepper. Just a little extra flavor, a little vitamin C. Could all use more veggies. So same rough chop. Nothing fancy. Throwing it right in there. And we'll let those cook down for a minute. I also like to add some greens for no other reason than we could all use to eat more greens. While we let this cook, I'm going to go ahead and preheat the oven to about 250. 
because once we get these veggies cooked a little bit, get the flavor into the stock, we're gonna go ahead and dehydrate them in the oven. So we're gonna get them nice and dry, and powder them up to turn them into a chicken noodle soup seasoning that we'll use later on in the recipe. All right, so you can see we've got a bit of a, a simmer going on here. Nice, we got a good shot of that. So you get a little color going, not trying to boil them down too much, wanna to keep some vegetable integrity here. But now that those have cooked for a minute, we'll toss in our greens. I know this looks like a disproportionate amount of greens, but they will cook down so fast, you'll barely even know they were there. So let's get those stirred right in. It'll wilt up before you even know it. Go. See that lovely purple color the broth's getting? That's from the red onions and the purple carrots rather than just the boring, clear stuff we're used to. All right, now we have the greens wilted down nicely. We're gonna go ahead and strain those out. So a strainer positioned over in the sink here as to not make some sort of horrible mess. Let's get that going. Remember, the oven's been preheating to 250 this whole time because we are about to dehydrate these vegetables into a lovely chicken noodle soup seasoning. It's gonna turn that pot off. We don't need it at the moment. Shake out the vegetables. And then we'll grab our lovely Pyrex oven safe dish. And for the purposes of nothing sticking to it, I'm gonna use a little nonstick foil, use parchment paper, anything you like. I wouldn't recommend oil because we don't wanna remove the integrity of the flavor of the vegetables. Let's get that lined up. Toss these fellas right in here. Spread them out as best you can. The thinner the layer, the better. I'd recommend not using your hand, but I uh, burned the finger, uh, the uh, sensations out of my fingers years ago. So let's go ahead and toss that right in the oven. And it's gonna vary oven to oven. They're all a little different, like people. This one, 250, 10, 20 minutes. We'll see how it goes. All right, and while we get these guys dehydrating nicely, I'm gonna take a minute, clean up a little bit, and get into the next step. All right, while we get our vegetables nice and dehydrated for our seasoning, we're gonna go ahead and cook the pasta. It's again, a veggie-laden pasta, as much for color and health factor as anything else. Just gonna toss that in. We don't wanna cook it fully, just right around al dente. Gonna vary depending on your heat. I like to keep it on a nice medium. Just get those cooked down enough. Then we're gonna strain those out too and have a paper towel and a t uh, plate ready. Get them all dried out. I'm gonna give them a nice fry for some crunch on our sandwich in a little bit here. Grab a couple of paper towels, fold them over, and we'll be good to go in a few minutes once these get cooked. All right, while we wait for our pasta to cook a little bit, we're gonna get started on the meatballs themselves. We're gonna use the same basic veggies, leaving the peppers out of this one to keep it nice and traditional. We have carrots, celery, onion, little mirepoix, nothing too fancy. Again, rough cut. Want these meatballs to look, look homemade, feel a little rustic like they came right off a of mom's stove. So we'll get these carrots chopped up. Couple more, you see we're using the traditional uh, William of Orange colors here. Just, just evokes chicken noodle soup when you think about it, that nice white, green, orange color to it. Sweet chopped veggies. Let's get those going. All right, while we do that, we're gonna get into the celery. A little bit of seasoning up here. Have a nice pre-mixed blend, a little salt, pepper, garlic powder herbs de Provence, and just a touch of red pepper flake for some heat. Don't want too much heat, still wanna keep it nice and mild because it is chicken soup after all. A little heat never hurt anybody. So we obviously don't need to use an entire half of an onion here, and this needs to be a little smaller. You don't want massive onion chunks in your meatballs. All right, stick those to the side, toss out some peels and throw these fellas right in there with the carrots. All right. Have a stalk or two of celery, depending on how large they are. Clip off the ends just because they tend to get a little rough. 
typically chop off the other end too. It's a little dirty, a little funky. I like to cut these right down the middle. Got some nice, small, evenish pieces. It's even the celery is ever gonna get. It is nature after all. Cutting these fellas down. Chap them right up. Most of rest uh, grocery stores will give you several options. Personally, I prefer to go with the leg meat, the dark meat, just because it has a little more flavor. But if you're trying to be healthy, breast meat's fine. Whatever makes you happy. Doesn't matter that much. While we're letting those vegetables go, any recipe needs some garlic in it, even beyond the garlic powder we already have. So I'm a huge fan of these frozen little cubes that each cube qualifies as a whole clove of garlic. That way it saves time from mincing, dicing yourself. Same amount of flavor, just as good, a whole lot easier. And I like to overload with garlic. We're doing about six, seven cloves in here. It sounds like a lot, but once you taste the meatballs, you'll never even notice it's that much. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss the chicken right in with those. Discard this fella. Give the hand a quick rinse. Nobody needs uh, salmonella, no raw chicken. Toss in the spice blend. And grab an egg out of here just for a binder. Doesn't really bring any flavor to the table. Just makes the meatballs hold together nicely. Always in favor of cracking the egg on a flat surface. If you do it on the edge, shells get lodged up in there. Much easier to get some shell going. Crack it right in. You'll notice I'm not using any binders for the meatballs. I don't feel that they're strictly necessary most of the time. Any of that are quick working with the hands. As some people might use spoons if you're grossed out by the idea of touching raw meat and raw egg. But really, man has yet to invent a tool more useful than a human hand. So get these nice and mixed up. Looks like our noodles are just about ready. So get these mixed, give the hand a wash, and then let's get after that stuff. All right, so now we've got the pasta cooked down to just short of al dente. So we want it to still have some body for the frying we're about to do to it. So let's go ahead and get that strained. Grab my other pot holder here. Strain it out into a bowl conveniently placed in here already. All right, there we go. Set that up. Pour our broth back in. And you can turn the heat off at this time because we don't want to cook it down any further right now. All right, let's dump the pasta out onto our conveniently prepared paper towel sheet. It's gonna dry it off. Mixing water and frying oil, not the best idea. I generally recommend against it unless you wanna get some weird grease burns. So let's go ahead and put a couple more on. Try to pat that out. While we're doing that, get a little bit of oil, preferably olive oil. Nothing too crazy, you don't want to impart any flavor in it. Just a little bit, a tablespoon or so. So when I get crazy, just frying up some pasta. So we'll get that thing started, about medium, medium high heat. Don't want to get too crazy, make sure the pan's nice and coated. I always love cast iron for frying things. It contains the heat a lot better. Nice, even, even temps, which is always ideal. You're not gonna lose heat using cast iron. All right, so we have our pasta. See, it's sticking to the paper towel a little bit. That's all right. A little extra fiber never hurt anybody. So I'm gonna go ahead. We don't need to cook all of these. We're gonna add some to the meatball mixture before we cook it, just for that extra noodly goodness. I'm gonna throw some of these right into our pan here with the oil going again, medium, medium high heat. Get that nice crackling sound, but not too much spitting because we dried it out from the water to begin with. We don't need too much. This is just gonna be a nice crunch factor, a little texture on top of our sandwiches when the time comes. And put those in there. Don't wanna jostle them around too much. Just a little stirring here and there, nothing wild. Just want a nice bit of crisp. If you just cut them off too soon, they'll be gummy. Still kinda tasty, but probably not quite what we're looking for right here. All right, while we get those going, we'll check on our dehydrating veggies in the oven. Again, these will take a little while. Ideally, if you're one of those people who has a dehydrator, like I do, because it's lovely and I love making beef jerky with it, that would be great. It does take longer, 
but you're not gonna run the risk of burning them. So eventually we're gonna get these out. Once they're nice and dry and crispy, crunchy. If you have a spice grinder, it'd be a beautiful thing. Mix it all up. If you don't, little plastic baggie, just mush it up with your hand, get them nice and powdered. And we end up with this. Little chicken noodle soup seasoning. Still has the flavor from the broth and all the seasonings in it, but uh, just a little something something to toss on top of the sandwiches when they're done. It's like powdered soup, it's great. Getting these guys crunched up. They're gonna take mm, probably 10 minutes or so. But now that we have our dehydrated veggies out of the stove, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the temp up to 350. So we're about to get our meatballs going in a minute here. There we go. Get some nice crispy action going on the sides there, but they're gonna take a minute longer. Noodles aren't exactly meant to be fried like this, but we're not trying to do things traditionally here, no are we? So we'll put our extra pasta over here. Give just a few of these a quick little slice up to toss right on into the meatball mixture. Give a little, little color, a little texture. Not quite filler, but not dissimilar either. So let's see what we can do here. Don't need too many, just a decent handful. Don't want to overrun the meatiness of the meatballs. They are meatballs after all. So let's see what we got here. Nice rough cut, just getting a little texture, a little color in there. Everybody needs a little more texture and a little more color. We got a little color in there, so that's what we're looking for. Don't want them to burn, but again, I wouldn't worry too much about it as long as you're paying some amount of attention. There's that nice little brown crust to them. We want them to be crunchy. We just don't want that carbon black burn that ruins the flavor, makes it all bitter. Throw those right into our meatball mixture. And then don't worry about incorporating them now. We're gonna have to stir it up a little bit more to actually make the shape of our balls. So let's get that going. We'll pull out a pan, we're gonna cook the meatballs in. I just like to do something with the sides so the grease and fat doesn't ooze over the bottom. Gunk up your oven. No one likes cleaning the inside of an oven. So we'll give that, use a little oil, a little butter, a little spray, whatever works for you. Just so nothing sticks too much. You don't need a lot. It's the natural fat from the meat will help cover that anyway. So just get that nice and swirled around in there. Just a little bit on all the surfaces. Again, so nothing sticks. All right, still got the pasta going. Just about done. We're gonna wanna get another plate ready with paper towels to toss these on as soon as they're done. That way, soak up some of that excess oil. Don't need any of that. It's not good for anyone involved. Let's get rid of these guys for now. Set those aside until we need them. Get some more paper towels. Fold them up, nice double layer on there. Check on these fellas, They're just about getting there. It's that nice bubbly crispiness on the sides. Just wanna make sure they're nice and evenly coated to the best degree that we can. That is looking pretty good. Cut the heat, pull them over here, and spoon them out. Don't just dump it. That's just extra oil that doesn't need to be involved in our sandwich. All right, so we got that going. So let's go ahead and pat these fellas dry. Not totally crispy, but a little chew, a little texture. I wouldn't recommend eating it fresh out of the pan, but it's good. Nice and nice, nice and tasty. We'll chew good mouthfeel to it. All right, so while we're doing that, got the stove preheating to 350. Let's make some meatballs. All right, let's work these meatballs. Get that pasta nice and incorporated in there. Just a little extra, extra flavor, extra style to them. Make it a little more chicken noodle soupy. All right, so you see the meat sticking to my hands. Wet is good for that, it helps a little bit, but they're gonna stick to your hands some. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Got a nice, decent sized meatball. Again, if you're uncomfortable doing this with your bare hands, get a scoop, get a melon baller, whatever works for you. So you go ahead and shape these out. Little, not quite golf ball size, maybe a little smaller, but if you like your meatballs big, you like them little, do as you please. So get these things all set up. 
see so you got the oven preheating and uh, that's about that let's get these guys going all right so let's go ahead we got our balls nicely rolled up here I'm gonna pop these fellas in the oven again we're at 350 it's gonna vary from your oven and the size of your balls say so anywhere between 10 16 20 minutes estimate these we'll check in on them about five to eight minutes, see what kind of progress we're making, cut into them if we have to, make sure they're cooked. Again, raw chicken, not good for anybody. We're gonna get going with our sauce. So we have the seasoned chicken stock that we had going already. See that nice questionable color we have going there. <laughs> and we're basically gonna make something akin to a gravy. So we'll start off, put a little bit of butter in here, not too much, good, good healthy dollop, maybe a couple tablespoons. Toss that right in our pan. Out, say medium, medium low heat. Don't want anything to burn or melt too quickly. The butter is already softened. Rinse a little bit of that off. And we're, like I said, more or less making a gravy. So we're gonna make a roux. Get this stuff nicely melted down. Want the butter to be basically melted by the time we add any flour or anything else there. So I'll let that go for a moment. And we get whatever kind of flour you'd prefer to use. All purpose is fine. This is actually a gluten-free blend. Just, uh, you know, better for you. So let's see, butter is almost there. I'll grab a spoon for my gravy. Get that going nicely. There we go, nice melty butter. We're gonna just add flour just a little bit at a time. Don't want too much, don't want it to get clumpy. Keep it nice and stirred in there. It'll start to form like a, a thick, almost paste-looking thing. So once we get a good paste going, again, flour just a little bit at a time. We don't need too much. We're only making a handful of sandwiches here. So, see it's starting to clump up. Looks a little bit like wallpaper paste, something like that. We're getting it going. The longer you cook this, this could be the base for almost any sort of sauce or stew even, gumbo. But for our purposes, it's chicken noodle soup gravy. So get that going. All right, so it's nice and starting to clump up. So we're gonna go ahead and ladle a little bit of our stock in there. So this is gonna be the primary flavor component of the sauce. We'll have to add a little bit of seasoning just to counteract all the flour we're putting in there. This flour, not exactly known for its flavorful nature. So it's starting to absorb. You hear that little sear initially. Getting smoother, smoothing it out a little bit. Almost looks like mashed potatoes at this point. So just keep going a little bit at a time. There we go. Almost. Let's give it another ladle here. All right. Let's toss in a little bit of our dehydrated chicken noodle soup seasoning. Remember, this was the, these are the vegetables we cooked earlier. So it's a little carrot, a little onion, a little pepper, a little greens, all powdered up. See, we're starting to bubble. We're just going to turn the heat down just a little bit. Get that seasoning stirred in. Give it that nice chicken noodle soupy flavor. We're gonna check on our meatballs in a minute here. We'll be right back. All right, so we've had the meatballs going about seven, seven and a half minutes now. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at these fellas. So they obviously are not completely cooked yet. Still gonna need a minute there. But let's go ahead and flip those around. Make sure they cook nice and evenly. Probably just from the look of those. So we're gonna need at least another 10 minutes. But we'll check it. All right, so we're back. Meatballs are just about done. But while we wait to finish those out, let's prep our bread up a little bit. Right, nice plate to set these fellas on. This may not be the most traditional way to serve a sandwich. I feel like it's at least a little more aesthetically pleasing. I'm gonna slice right into our rolls. Fresh baked this morning. Fresh bread, always better. I'm gonna get a nice little deep V in here. Cut that fella out. There we go. Nice little resting place for our balls. Test this to the side. Breadcrumbs, croutons, million one uses. All right, let's, let's check on these fellas. First, gonna make a little space on the stove to sit down a pot, pan, tray, item the meatballs are in. Let's go ahead and grab that. It's looking nice and cooked. It's a little bit of oil on the bottom there, but that's not a problem. Let's go ahead and cut into one of these just to make sure they're good to go. Pick one of the larger ones, slice on in, 
and we're gold. Oh yeah, soupy, soupy and delicious. So let's go ahead and grab this roll. I'm gonna toss in two, three, four meatballs, depends on how big you made them. What you looking for? Let's tuck them right inside there. Nice and pretty. And we're gonna add our sauce. Nice gravy we have waiting over here. Ladle a little bit of that over the top. You don't wanna get too crazy, make it too soggy. Very nice. Top it with our crunchy noodles. Just texture, color. Little of this, little of that. One last sprinkle of our chicken soup seasoning. And there we go, chicken noodle soup meatball sandwich. soup in a bun. Delicious. Now on to the most quintessentially summary of cocktails, the gin and tonic. The origins of the gin and tonic can be traced back to the British East India Company in the 1700s when Dr. George Cleghorn discovered that quinine could be used to help treat malaria. We're trying to make it a little healthier. We're gonna bring in some turmeric, known for its anti-inflammatory, antioxidant characteristics. Black pepper releases an enzyme that allows us to absorb more of the nutritional value of turmeric. So we have a nice bottle, London Dry Gin here, that I had to infuse yesterday. Pepper needs to sit overnight, but wouldn't let it go more than 24 to 48 hours, depending on how peppery you'd like it to be. Just pour out a little splash of gin, knock it back, about two tablespoons of black peppercorns, you're good to go. So now let's blend up our turmeric tonic. But about a two inch piece of turmeric is equal to about a tablespoon of dried turmeric. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss that right in the blender here. And then we're making it into a syrup. So our traditional simple syrup of equal parts sugar and water. Just nice cane sugar, nothing fancy. Throw that right in there. Just regular old water, tapped, bottled, whatever it is that you consume on a regular basis. All right, pop the lid on and blend this fella up. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's have a look here. Nice and spicy, nice and smooth. We're good to go on that. It's very simple from here. And take our rocks glass, any standard size, whatever you prefer to drink out of. Pints if you're feeling frisky that day. Get a little ice going in there. All right. Squeeze in a little bit of lemon juice. Always use fresh juice. Slice our lemon in half here. Got some nice fresh juice going, just a little bit of acidity needed in every cocktail. Nice hand juicer. Love these things much easier than doing it otherwise. So what we're looking for here is just a little bit of juice. A little less than one part in comparison to the gin and the uh, turmeric mixture. Got a nice bit of lemon. And do about two parts of the black pepper gin. You can strain out the peppers ahead of time if you'd like. I think a little couple peppercorns in there look nice. Make it a little more fun. So let's go ahead and put that in there. There we go. Nice freaky dark color for a gin. All right. We'll pour in about one part of our turmeric blend. Right in there. It's a little chunky, beautiful orange color. All right. This over here, pop open our bottle of tonic, and whichever one makes you happy, just top it off. You don't need too much tonic for the same bitter issue. All right, give it a little stir with our bar spoon. There we go, try not to spill too much. No one wants spilled gin. And just a quick little lemon peel for some garnish. Get a little bit of that extra flavor in there. Just squeeze it. Skin side down, release those essential oils. Quick rub around the rim, pop it in, and bottoms up. <sighs> Refreshingly spicy. All right, I'm just gonna clean up a little, get our sandwiches back here, have ourselves a nice refreshing meal. And there you have it. Maybe not what you picture for chicken noodle soup and a gin and tonic, but we made our own, and you can too. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram to see more weird takes on the classics and share your own with the hashtag MakeItYourOwn. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Justin Gellarmino, 
Let's keep it weird out there.